Hello everyone, my name is Jared Salem and I'm excited to be joining you today at the 11th Central Asia Trade Forum to talk about targeting high value travelers in 2022 and beyond. I've put together a little bit of a presentation to go alongside my talk today, so let's get into it. So today I'm talking about targeting high value travelers in 2022 and beyond. First, who am I? My name is Jared Salem. I am the founder of Nomadosaurus, the adventure travel blog and one of the largest travel blogs in the world. I am the director of Peak Evolution Media, which is a SEO and content marketing agency based in Australia. I'm also a professional content creator, a professional photographer working with Sony, and I work around the world taking photos and creating videos for clients. In the past, I've worked with USAID and Haveltas to promote tourism in Central Asia, primarily in Kyrgyzstan, but also in other countries in Central Asia. I run adventure and photography tours in Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Antarctica, and have a lot of personal travel experiences in these types of parts of the world. And I've worked with over two dozen national tourism boards globally. First, let's talk about who or what is a high value traveler. A high value traveler is a person who is likely to spend more time and money in a particular destination. So they will travel to a region for more than just a weekend or for a week. They might be traveling for two to four weeks, sometimes even longer. Somewhere like Central Asia, they might be planning on spending two to four weeks in one country, or they may be combining multiple countries into one trip and they're willing to spend a lot more money in that destination because it may just be a once a year or once every couple of years kind of experience. A high value traveler is someone who is willing to spend more money for unique experiences. So to them, experiences are worth their money investment and the more unique, the better. Luckily, somewhere like Central Asia has plenty of these as well. A traveler who is happy to pay a premium for higher quality services. So a high value traveler is not someone who is looking to cut costs on their budget. They are happy to pay top dollar if it means they're gonna get a incredible experience in exchange. A high value traveler is a tourist who will pay a commission to have a local tour operator handle all their logistics. So they want to get in touch with someone in Bishkek or Almaty or Tashkent or somewhere like that and just have them organize every part of their trip, whether it is the transfers from the airport or transport around the country, tours, all that kind of stuff. They just want to be able to go to one person and let them handle all the bookings. And they are also someone who wants cultural immersion without sacrificing comfort. So they are seeking those cultural experiences of staying with locals or being out in the fields with the shepherds and learning about how they live but they don't necessarily want to sacrifice their comfort. Maybe they want to go back and stay in a nice hotel at night instead of staying out in a tent out in the Jailu. So that is the kind of person a high value traveler is. We'll just go into a few little figures for high value travelers to get you guys a little bit of an idea of who they are exactly. So more than 80 million people have been identified as high value travelers in 2019 and that's a statistic from Tourism Australia during their research. Now that number of course could be a lot higher but that is the type of people over 80 million who think or consider themselves to be a high value traveler. 93% seek authentic experiences through the local culture and getting a taste of everyday life. Now notice that we say getting a taste. They want to see and understand how people live or travel in a particular place, but they don't necessarily want to do it full time. So to give you a exact idea, it could be someone who is very happy and actually looks forward to taking a mashuka for 20 minutes, as opposed to jumping in a mashuka for an entire day. They just want that bit of a taste of how the locals live while they can then have their own comfort as well. Only 21% of high value travelers will sacrifice comfort for a lower price. Now that means 79% would rather pay more money for better services, things like better vehicles, better accommodation, better food, etc. And 67% of high income travelers said they would rather spend their vacation money on activities than a nicer hotel room. Now that is fantastic to know because 
Of course, in Central Asia, there is a lot of incredible activities. And while there is a very nice cross section of a different accommodation styles, it's not necessarily a region people go to for that five star hotel or five star resort. So that is totally fine for targeting high value travelers in Central Asia because most of them are actually looking to spend money on activities instead of the accommodation. And 60% of high value travelers consider customer service as their priority when choosing a brand for booking their travel. So customer service is a priority and that's something that operators in Central Asia need to put a large emphasis on. Luckily, a lot of tour operators and accommodation partners in Central Asia are already really fantastic at delivering exceptional customer service. So that's not necessarily something that people have to worry about, but it is very important to keep in mind. And 6,080 US dollars. That is the amount the average American spends on an international trip. So it is a substantial amount of money that people are willing to spend to go on a holiday somewhere. It's not a small amount, so that is a good number to keep in mind, that people are willing to spend that to part with that much money for an international trip, and that is just the average American. Europeans would obviously spend a little bit more because they're more used to international travel as well. What do high value travelers look for in their holidays? They are looking for those unique cultural experiences and of course that is something that Central Asia has in droves. So things like eagle hunting, cooking classes, ceremonies, music, dancing experiences and things like that. People who are high value travellers want to be amongst the culture when they travel somewhere, particularly in a place like Central Asia. They are looking for adventure activities, horse trekking, rock climbing, biking, hiking, rafting, those kinds of things where they're going to get their blood pumping, where they're going to exert some energy and have some incredible experiences out in nature. And being out in nature is of course something that they are hoping to do when they travel. So they're not necessarily looking to spend time in the big cities unless we're talking about somewhere like Samarkand or Bukhara perhaps where they are traveling there specifically for those Silk Road cities in history. They want to be in the mountains or by the rivers, out in the valleys. They want to be out in nature when they travel. They want to get away from the hustle and bustle that they have back home in their everyday lives. They want to go to places that other tourists don't go. Now this is a big one. They want to go to remote villages, places where you've got to get hard to acquire permits, new emerging destinations. Essentially a high value traveler wants to go somewhere that none of their friends have been before. They want those bragging rights. So that is why places like Jogalan in Kyrgyzstan, for example, have flourished in recent years because it has always been a very unique place that not many people have visited. So when a high value traveler comes to Kyrgyzstan, they want to go somewhere like there so that when they meet their friends who maybe have been to Kyrgyzstan or been to Kazakhstan and they're talking about their experiences, they can say, oh, I went to a place, hardly any tourists go there, it's well worth checking out. And high value travelers will very happily pay a lot more money to go to these places. They are looking for interactions with local people. So these can be both curated and spontaneous. So curated might be having those tours or maybe having musicians come into your dinner place in the evenings and they get to see how the local people play music or things like that or it could be spontaneous such as meeting a family out in the valleys while they're hiking or getting to know or chat to some people in the local markets and things like that. They're also looking for bucket list attractions so traveling the Pamir Highway, climbing Peak Lenin, traveling to those Silk Road cities. They want to do things that they have been thinking about for years and ticking them off that bucket list. Especially in 2022 and beyond when the pandemic starts to ease and people are starting to travel again safely, they are going to be doing trips that are more in line with what their big overall visions are for what they want to achieve in their lives and the places they want to go, as opposed to going back to the same holidays they always have before. And relaxation. Now, Central Asia isn't necessarily the kind of place that someone goes for a, a relaxing holiday and that's not the kind of thing that high value travelers are looking for. They're not looking to sit by a pool for two weeks. However, they also don't want every day to be jam packed with activities 
and attractions. So they might want to do two, three days hiking and then have a day where they're just relaxing in the village or maybe spending the afternoon at some hot springs. They don't want to get to the end of their holiday and feel like they need another holiday. So it's important to incorporate some time for relaxation into trips that high value travelers are booking. Now, of course, those are the things that they're looking for. And they, there are other things that people in Central Asia are gonna to have to get used to organizing for high value travelers in order to help them achieve their big ticket holidays. So a high value traveler is looking for all logistics to take, be taken care of by the operator. So that is you as the tour operator, as the accommodation partner. They want to be in touch with you and let you book absolutely everything. They don't want to have to worry about a thing. They don't want to arrive at their accommodation and not know how they're going to get to their next town the next day. They want authentic yet comfortable accommodation. So it doesn't have to be five star, but it does need to be clean. It does need to be warm, especially in the winter months. And ideally it should be private if possible. So a high value traveler would absolutely love to stay in a yurt, for example. And in fact, they may even book an entire two week holiday of only staying in yurt camps, but there's a very high chance that they are going to want a nice comfortable bed in a private or twin chair yurt. And again, they're going to be willing to pay a lot more money for that. Good, healthy food. Now the food in Central Asia is delicious. It is amazing. And when travelers come to Central Asia, they're often surprised at just how good the food is there. But it's important to give people a variety of options every day. So go to different restaurants if you can, or try to give people a taste of what all the different cuisines are in your particular country. Home cooked meals are fantastic. And there are a lot of great homestays all throughout Central Asia. And the meals that are prepared by the families, they're often very highly regarded by travelers. And also try to incorporate fruit and vegetables into the diets of your high value travelers. So while it might be difficult to get a lot of different fruit and vegetables in some of the places that you may be taking your high value travelers, just by having some, some fruit in the vehicle that they can snack on in between will help keep the people feeling like they're having a nice nutritious diet while they're traveling there and will keep them quite happy. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have safe and reliable transport. Now, this is extremely important. You need a fairly modern, reliable vehicle, something that's got air conditioning, that's well-maintained, that the guests can get into and feel safe and not feel like they're gonna break down in the middle of nowhere. So if you are planning on working and attracting high value travelers, make sure you're prepared to have a very reliable and modern vehicle that will be used to transport those guests around. English speaking guides as well, or French or German or whichever market you're trying to target, it's really important that your tours, your tourists are gonna to have access to English speaking guides at all times. Now this is so that they can meet with other local people who may, might not necessarily speak English and that they can connect with there, or just so they have a local they can ask questions to because high value travelers are very curious about the local culture and the local people. And they wanna come away learning a lot as much as they can from these trips so it's very important to have English speaking guides who can communicate with them and they want all-inclusive package fees so what this means is is if a high-value traveler books a tour or an experience with your company they do not want to have to open up their wallets again unless it's for a optional thing like a souvenir or for alcohol for example so they are gonna to want to have all their food included, all their water included, transport, everything. Essentially, they wanna pay one price and not have to be constantly paying anything extra. And that's something you can work into your own prices, whether you add a slight profit margin on top of that to make sure that you're never gonna be out of pocket by including all these things. But that will make a high value traveler's holiday feel seamless where They've just paid the one price and that's all they've had to pay and they never have to think about money or feel like they're getting ripped off or anything like that. And it's really important for high value travelers. Remember, a high value traveler will pay a premium for a fantastic holiday. If you're willing to deliver a fantastic, incredible, exceptional holiday, a high value traveler will not question the higher price point on it. 
So how do you target high value travelers? There's a number of different ways. One is to be very active on social media. So social media is a source of inspiration. It adds a human element to your company and guests might be looking to Instagram or Facebook to see just how active you are on social media. Now it's not something where you have to be posting three times a day, but you should have a profile that you are regularly sharing experiences that travelers are having on your tours or in your accommodation, things like that. Have a modern website. This is extremely important if you want to be targeting high value travelers. A good website will add trust and authority to your brand and anyone who is willing to spend a lot of money on a trip to somewhere like Central Asia is going to want to know that the company they're sharing their money with is a reputable company and having a good clean modern website does reflect that. Now you don't have to spend a fortune on a, getting a very good website, you can get one very affordable these days but it is a absolute necessity if you want to be targeting these high value travelers to have a website that looks like it was made in 2022 and is very active and showcases all the information you would ever need. Build your online presence. So create a Google My Business account. Have all your social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok if that's your thing. Feel free to target as many social media accounts as you can. Have a profile on TripAdvisor, Expedia and other Booking.com, other tour or travel or accommodation booking aggregators and get featured in travel blogs or lifestyle blogs or newspapers and other online publications. Essentially what you want is for someone to Google your brand name or your company name and see that you have been featured in a lot of different places. Again, it adds trust and value to your company and then those high value travelers are gonna be more willing to spend their money with you. Have excellent imagery of your destination, product or accommodation. This is very important as well because a high value traveler wants to know where they're going and what they're gonna see and the better photos and videos you have, the more inclined they're gonna to be to try and book that trip or book that destination. So don't just use an old phone to take a quick snap. Make sure you are getting fantastic photos and videos, have them edited, look really nice and clean. And that will also attract other high value travelers such as photographers or videographers because they wanna to go to these places and try to get their own images to mimic what you've got there. If you don't already have excellent imagery, reach out to the local tourism boards in your region or the national tourism boards, connect with local photographers or international travelers who are excellent photographers and bring them to your destination and get them to create imagery for you because it is gonna help sell your product. You need to be thorough and fast with your customer inquiries. So being fast will help get you the customer. And it's true that not everybody who emails you or sends you a message on Instagram is going to book a trip. Sometimes they're just looking for information. Sometimes they've copy and pasted an email to 50 different companies trying to get the cheapest price. But you will lose the trip with the right person with a high value traveler if you don't respond fast enough. So it's very important you reply as quickly as possible to every inquiry you get because you never know who that one inquiry is who might be the person who's gonna spend 20 or $30,000 with your company. You need to be very fast with keeping on top of your customer inquiries. And again, that adds trust to the brand and high value travelers will trust you if you're responding to them fast. Ask for online reviews from previous customers. A customer again will trust a company that has reviews on TripAdvisor or Facebook or Google and they will avoid a company that has none. So once you've had a few customers come along and they've joined you on a trip and they've had a great time, as no doubt they all will, ask them just to take two minutes out of their day to leave some online reviews and you can express how much it will help your company in the long run. And you'll find that almost every traveler will be willing to do that and it will help sell your tours in the future to high value travelers. You could have everything above absolutely perfect you could have your good website your online presence your great imagery but if someone then googles your name and sees that you've got zero reviews they might start to question whether you're a very new company or very, maybe you are not quite as reputable as you make it out to be so try to get at least a couple of reviews and make sure they're authentic don't just get all your friends to write quick reviews on google because people will be able to tell that get authentic reviews from customers who've had great experiences with your company 
find your unique selling proposition. So what sets your company apart? Do you have unique accommodation? Have you got the best yurt camp in Caracol? Have you got the most incredible eagle hunting experience that every that any operator has got you need to find what makes you unique and that's what you need to be pushing and promoting across your channels because if you are different to everyone else high value travelers will be willing to work with you and to travel with you focus on sustainability and i know sustainable tourism is a bit of a buzzword and gets thrown around a lot but it is very important to travelers in 2022 and beyond it's a growing trend and you can bring sustainability about in your tours by focusing on community-based travel, trying to be as eco-friendly as possible, only using responsible operators, not using animals in any kind of unethical ways and things like that. Be a one-stop shop for tourists to book their holidays. So if someone reaches out to you on social media and says, oh, I'm very interested in traveling to Tajikistan and I've got these ideas of what I want to do, you should be able to be the person that says, yep, I can organize everything for you and mean it and have a good network of other tour operators or accommodation partners around the country or around the region that you can rely on just as much as they can rely on you to deliver an exceptional product. And if you can be that one-stop shop for tourists, they're going to be willing to pay you as much money as it takes to have everything organized for them. And create detailed itineraries for private and group tours. So if you have an incredible seven-day Silk Road City tour, for example, that you really want to showcase, curate an excellent itinerary and put it up on your website or put it up on your social media so that people can see exactly what they're going to be doing if they book a tour with your company. That is really important and it's something where a lot of people are afraid that if they share what their itineraries are publicly that someone might come and steal them or try to copy them or try to book it themselves. It's important to keep in mind that that's going to happen regardless. So put your itineraries online and let a high value traveler open up your website and see exactly what they're going to do over seven days or 10 days or 14 days and you're essentially providing all the research for them and maybe even adding some things that a uh, high value traveler never would have thought of before and then they know that if they're going to book a trip they're going to know exactly what they're getting and that can be for private so one or two people or just group tours where anyone can join and the benefits to you as the operator, as the tour partner for targeting high value travelers is you of course get higher profit margins. Now, that's not to say that you can charge an exorbitant amount of compared to what the market is currently charging, but the more services you offer, the higher quality you can get if you're including better vehicles, uh, excellent English speaking guide, you're staying in nicer accommodation, your, your itinerary is unique, you're going to places that no one else goes to, you can charge a lot more money for that, which it means more profit for you as the operator and for your company. And once you have those higher profits, you can then invest into your company, into your business. So if you are a transport company, by having those high profit margins, you can then reinvest your money into getting better vehicles. Or if you're an accommodation, you can take those higher profit margins and then reinvest into getting better bathroom facilities. And then in turn, you can charge more money again because you now have even better facilities or amenities that the other people in your area might not necessarily have. So the more money you invest in your business, whether it's training for your staff or facilities, the more money you will make in the long run. I know it can be scary to try to think about putting all your money back into something, but it's where you're going to be able to grow your business in the long term. Now, opportunities for partnerships with international tour operators. So if you are the local tour operator that has already got the incredible products and the incredible connections and you're already targeting high value travelers, you may end up having large international tour companies reaching out to you and wanting to work with you. You might be able to become the exclusive partner for a multinational company for running tours or for hosting guests in Central Asia. So by targeting high value travelers, you're gonna become more attractive to these larger international tour operators as well. 
and you increase the number of visitors and income into the local community. So the more high value travels that are coming to your place, they are visiting your community, they are buying souvenirs from the local people, and that is then in turn gonna bring up the entire ecosystem of your local community. It's gonna help invest into the infrastructure there and everyone in your community is gonna benefit from that, not just yourself. And that is something that's very important to travelers of all types in 2022 and beyond, whether they're high value or backpacker or adventure or something like that. And it will allow you to focus on more boutique and niche clientele. So instead of trying to run 100 tours a year, you might be able to get cut back and only run 20 tours a year and target a more boutique or niche person, a high value traveler, instead of charging or instead of attracting every single person trying to make up as much money as you can. So by having these very unique selling propositions and targeting high value travelers, you can really limit the number of people that you have to take on these trips in order to be running a profitable business. So thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Again, my name is Jared Salem. I'm from Nomadosaurus and Peak Evolution Media. And if you have any questions about targeting high value travelers, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you very much.